Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Selby series. Selby is one of 11 subdivisions of the county of North Yorkshire. It's made up of 74 civil parishes, a lot of which are very small. Which one are we in this week? Right, today in Selby I've got one that I had to ask the locals how to pronounce. There's a few ways you could say it, and it's actually had a few spellings as well over time. There are two parts to this one as well, and both parts I had to ask, how do you say this? How do you say this? The first part is where we are right now. This is Rither, although I pronounced it Rither in an episode of the Parish Notice Board not too long ago. This is Rither. The second part is down that road over there, which we'll get to later, and that is Ossendyke. And together, they make Rither come Ossendyke. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Rither cum Ossendyke is a civil parish six miles from Tadcaster and six miles from Selby within North Yorkshire. It's centred on the village of Rither and it includes the hamlet of Ossendyke. Although nowadays a place that most traffic just passes through, Rither is a key link between many places the channel has already covered. See how many you can spot during the course of this video. I parked right outside one of the village's most iconic buildings, this lovely old Methodist chapel which was built in 1905. Currently for sale, it stands on the site of an earlier place of worship. The village once had several shops and many farms. Historically, many residents were farm labourers or had jobs in Kaywood. There were two public houses, but now only one remains. That one remaining pub is the Rither Arms. You'll notice a slight difference in spelling. This is a steakhouse. It was originally established as a specialist game restaurant. The Rither estate was owned by the Barons Haversham, who bequeathed it to Thomas Corbett, a Lincolnshire MP, in the 1830s, but the village history goes back much further than that. Rither's main religious building is All Saints Church, sited at the end of Church Walk at the village's eastern end. With a tall spire, All Saints is clearly visible from the main road. There's a moated site to the north of Church Walk. From the 12th to the 16th century, the village was the site of Rither Castle, the principal seat of the ancient de Rither family. They were the Lords of Scarcroft, who inherited Harewood Castle in about 1400. Several of the de Rither knights have effigies at All Saints Church. The church has late Saxon or early Norman origins, but its nave is 13th century and its porch is 14th century. The east window, bell turret and south porch were added in 1898. Rither originated as a parish in the Wapentake of Buxton Ash in the West Riding of Yorkshire. It contained the township of Led Hall, and if that name's familiar, well it should be. Led Hall is the same Led Hall that was referred to way back in the Led episode where St Mary's Chapel is. St Mary's was originally a chapel of ease to All Saints Church. Now the map will show you a path I don't know whether it's an actual public footpath or not that runs down the side of these trees here but you can't access it because the gate there is locked so if you do come here don't assume that you can walk through 
and down there because you can't seems to be a uh, private or at least access through that gate is private no big deal for us though because we're going back this way anyway through the churchyard again and to that very sharp bend where you saw the sign saying 11th century church we're turning left there and we will pick up a footpath that will take us to the other end of the village now we're back to the main road, which is the B1223 that links Ryther to Kaywood in the southeast. We're heading for a footpath. Ryther is something of a rambler's paradise. There are 40 separate footpaths to enjoy within the parish. One of them is the Queen's Jubilee Path, created in 2012, and it follows the boundaries approximately five miles in length. This footpath, however, is merely just a link between roads. It gives us an opportunity to talk a bit about the name of Ryther. This is the village where the surname Ryder would originate. Ryder was an occupational name for a rider or a trooper. Some sources suggest this may well have been a forest officer being mounted and having the supervision of a large district. That would make a lot of sense when you consider Ryder's history with the castle and the knights mentioned back at the church. From here, there's a pretty good view to the south over what is generally flat farmland. And in the distance, my eagle eye spotted another potential link between a building and a street name. Now in the distance over there, there's what appears to be an old windmill. I can't tell if it is, but it looks very, very much like it could well be. It could be because over there somewhere, there's a road called Mill Lane. So, you know, putting two and two together, that might be the mill just there. I can confirm it wasn't a mill. We're now on Mill Lane, which still harbours the suggestion that there maybe once was a mill here, but old OS maps show plenty of farms, but no windmills. What I think I was seeing was a farm, although it might have been the Oakwood at Ryther, a popular local wedding venue. That's because part of the Oakwood is an old grain store on a centuries-old family farm. Today's picture bit will show you what it looks like on the inside now. Now I can't imagine Ryther is not served by a bus. This very fancy bus stop tells me there used to at least be one at one time. However, I could find no public transport listings. That's strange. Mill Lane takes us back to the B1223 road, and this is where we get a look at the river. Ryther stands on the southern bank of the River Wharf, a tidal section which joins the Ouse near Kaywood. This is as close as the main walk gets to the River Wharf, and it's a fairly good view of it from up here, high above the riverbank. It was fast flowing too, you can hear the rush of water below. Okay, parish notice board time, which you'll find here at the end of Mill Lane. There's Mill Lane, here's the main road, the B1223 parish notice board it's getting one of these as always there we go that one's actually not too hard to stick on that's good now we've got a map here of uh, Ryther come Ossendyke so uh, I can't really show you where I am but it's sort of there-ish you can see Ryther is compared to the parish boundaries Ryther is quite small and uh, Ossendyke is here it's even smaller as you can see most of it is fields farmland all down here and running right through the center of it we've got the railway line that's the east coast main line and there's something here i want to address there is the parish name rather come ossendyke spelt o double -S, s e n d y k e ossendyke however the parish council spell it like this ozendyke there you have it so even now there are two sort of ways of spelling it that way and that way i don't think either are wrong i think they're both right that's the more modern version i believe this is the sort of i would i'll call it a bit sort of i call it the dated version but uh, it, it's it's right because that is the actual civil parish's name it's funny how british place names come about and how they change isn't it it's just how it is <laughs> We Brits don't do things logically sometimes. We really don't. Okay, now I need to walk down here and pick up the car. And then we're going to go to that place that's spelt in two or three different ways by uh, driving. And on the way, we'll catch the village hall, which is in between the two. 
There's a bench here which is a memorial to a local resident, Christine Lyle. Not a bad place to perch for a few moments and watch the world go by. I can't help but think it might have been better orientated towards the river though. This view is wholly better, and that's nothing against the village really. Our main circuit of the village is now complete. Just a couple more paces from this point brings us back to the old Methodist chapel. After picking up the car, a short drive out of the village brings us to the village hall, first built in 1983. However, it wasn't until the late 90s it became fit for use. That's because a lack of funds meant the building was an empty shell for 16 years. With help from the council, the 38th Royal Engineers Regiment from Clara Barracks in Ripon completed the job in 1999. Okay, so we're yet to see Ossendyke, and the easiest way to show you Ossendyke is by driving through it towards my next village here in Selby. Now, at the village hall, we're very close to the East Coast Main Line. If I just hop out of the way, I'll show you where it is. It's literally just there. A train came past a moment ago, and it sounded very close. We'll be crossing that to get to Ossendyke. I'm not sure if it's a bridge over it or a bridge under it, but either way, we do need to cross the line. And then we'll drive through Ossendyke towards the next village. But before I do that, you guys need today's picture bit. And that's coming your way right about now. Ossendyke is very dissimilar to Ryther. Whilst Ryther is a reasonable size, its counterpart has very few houses. It's a real blink and you'll miss it kind of place this. Crossing the East Coast Main Line was evidently via an overbridge. I couldn't remember which way around the crossing was. Once over that bridge, we're out of Ryther and into Ossendyke. Ossendyke has had various spellings throughout history. Modern maps will show it spelt the same way as the parish council, that's Ozendyke with a Z. However, it's also been spelt with two Zs, giving the minor pronunciation difference Ozendyke. And confusingly, it's also been known to be spelt with a Z and an I, as opposed to a Y. There are other spellings as well, but they all mean the same thing. The curious thing about Ossendyke would be how it got its name. Ossendyke originates from Old Norse and it refers to the personal name Osmond and a tree believed to be an oak tree as the Norse word for such is Ike, hence this was Osmond's Ike. Like Ryther, the hamlet is situated on the south bank of the River Wharf and has often been at risk of flooding. Ossendyke Ings are within the parish. With regards to flooding, Ryther Cum Ossendyke Parish Council has something called a flood committee which lobbies for improvements to existing flood alleviation schemes. The B1223 becomes Boggart Lane here. In the next episode, we'll be talking a bit about Boggart holes occasionally found across the north. This was the location of one. And that's that, folks. Ryther Cum Ossendyke is in the books. This road leads to the next village you'll be treated to in this series. But until then, I've been Andy, I've been the village idiot, and I'm out.